Hello guys, Winston here. As most of you know from my last video, I've wanted to try out vacuum forming for quite some time now. This meant I had to somehow acquire a vacuum table, and since I wasn't going to buy one, I had to make one. The main constraint I set for myself was that I wanted to work with 1 square foot panels of plastic since you can easily buy large sheets of acrylic or polycarbonate in 6 to 12 inch increments. This in turn meant that my frame to hold the material had to be about the same size to support the plastic when it got droopy. On the stock shape Oko 2, you have a theoretical workspace of just under 12 by 12 inches, not quite enough to comfortably machine the full area that I wanted. What I needed was either an enlarged shape Oko 2 or a shape Oko 3, and I just so happened to have the latter. In terms of design, I decided to make my plastic holding frame 11.75 inches square since I had a bunch of roughly cut square foot panels of quarter inch MDF to work with. These would be 7 eighths of an inch thick along each edge to seat on a 10 by 10 inch wide vacuum table. I planned on thickening parts of the frame so I could install threaded inserts in the bottom half and use bolts to clamp the plastic sheet in place. These bolts would also go through the plastic sheets to keep them from sliding around as they softened. The vacuum table itself would be about 2 and a quarter inches tall to fit a 1 and a half inch diameter hose. I'd use interlocking panels to keep everything aligned while I glued the box together. To create the G-code for my vacuum table surface, I made use of MakerCam's drill option. This preset cycle lets you peck drill holes at the geometric center of paths, and it's faster than trying to follow the inside profile of a circle. Thankfully, the pathing algorithm didn't make a mess of things, and the toolpath it generated was pretty logical. I did a little manual post-processing on the G-code to bump up the speed of my rapids and shorten the program runtime. After cutting out all my pieces and gluing the box together, I plugged in my vacuum and checked that it was indeed pulling air. Then it was time to move on to phase 2, working with plexiglass. What I wanted to do with this project was create a conformal shell for one of my smartphones that I could use for protecting it in extreme environments. The original plan for this protective case was to be an armored, vibration isolating mount for recording my mediocre paintball exploits. So to start off, I designed a positive form in the shape of my sacrificial smartphone of choice, an LG G2. Then I added material to my form that I would eventually fill with low density polyethylene foam to dampen out shocks and vibrations. I also wanted a large flat surface in front of the rear facing camera that I would bolt to an aluminum mounting plate. I ran the STL through mesh cam and punched out my positive form out of 3 quarter inch plywood. I purchased a 12 by 24 inch sheet of plexiglass from Home Depot, 0.09 inches thick as my test candidate for vacuum forming. To split it into two square foot halves, I decided to give the score and break method another try, having failed miserably at it when building my Shape Oko 2 enclosure. After scoring the plexiglass multiple times on each side and using wooden boards to focus the bending stresses on the score line, I was pleasantly surprised to find that the technique actually worked. It took more force than I expected, but I got a clean fracture across the width of my acrylic. I drilled a matching hole pattern for the support frame, bolted the plexiglass in, and set it in a 350 degree oven for a couple minutes. From my casual internet research, I was looking for the plastic to start drooping under its own weight. When I saw this start to happen, I immediately pulled the frame out of the oven and put it onto the vacuum table. Unfortunately, I was a bit too hasty with this step. The acrylic wasn't soft enough to be drawn over the finer details of my form, so I put it back in the oven to soften further. The next time I tried it, I got further, but it still didn't quite conform to my plywood mold. Acrylic, in the thickness that I'd chosen, is pretty difficult to work with. Even when it's brought past its glass transition temperature, it has a finite bend radius that you can't exceed unless you get much closer to its full-on melting point, and I wasn't comfortable doing that in my oven. I considered moving the entire vacuum table and mold into the oven and slumping my plexiglass over it at 400 degrees, but I figured I'd keep the hot working to my stovetop which has a range hood that actually exhausts to the outside of the house. Using a heat gun, I warmed up the plexiglass and manually formed it to the desired shape with vacuum assistance. While I did end up with something that looked correct, it was flawed in several crucial ways. The first was that I'd actually burned a patch of plexiglass by heating it for too long. The second was that the heating process in the oven had introduced visible imperfections throughout the material. The acrylic had started outgassing significantly enough to form bubbles. The third and most significant flaw that prevented me from using this case as intended was that the top surface wasn't actually flat. The minimum bend radius of the plastic caused the edges to be slightly raised. This was a huge barrier to my plans to mate the front side to a mounting bracket. That didn't make this case useless, however. 
My alternate plan is to attach this piece to a tripod and use it as a blast shield for my G2. You see, when I went to the Kennedy Space Center to attend the CRS-5 NASA social back in the winter, I discovered a whole community of rocket nuts and space photographers who plant cameras at launch pads. These people capture some incredible images of even more incredible engineering feats, and as a maker and a dabbler, I kinda sorta wanna try doing it. To make this work, however, I need to do three things. One, devise a quarter twenty threaded screw mount to put my case on a tripod. Two, nail out a plywood backplate to seal the case. And three, be invited back to NASA to attend a launch. The latter is why I released two videos today. This one and another one about my experiences at the Kennedy Space Center. I would love it if you gave me some honest feedback about it. Let me know in the comments section down below if you would or wouldn't be terribly offended by more nerdy content in the future. And that's all I have for this week. I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time with version 3.0 of my armored smartphone case.